everyone, welcome to a Talking Talk podcast. I'm your host Teddy, and today I'm being joined once again by Aiden. And today we're going to be talking about the Team and T 2003 Season 1, Episode 21, Return to New York, Part 1. So, what do you think about this episode briefly? Briefly, this episode was very quick and fast paced. It was a lot of action in a short amount of time, and it was very, very interesting to see them all return to New York as a family. Yeah, I have to say that this episode was, I'll say it was, was really good, and I must admit, like, with the action-packed episodes, they're always really great just for just sitting back, relax, and just enjoying some action, and this episode is no different, and if, I, I don't know, on one hand, it was really great to see all that, but on the other hand, it just feels, like, very weird, but, yeah... Okay, so first on off with the actual um, um, with the actual characters returning to New York, we get to see them all going in suits, wondering where the fur gone and stuff like that, and then going to a lair. Uh, do you have anything to say about that scene? Um, I don't really have much to say. Um, despite the fact that they managed to get into New York and in the sewers, um, undetected by the Shredder or anyone else, I'm guessing it's because Shredder thought they were killed. In the explosion from last, uh, from the last couple of episodes ago, but I gotta say, I really did like um, how Donnie managed to put like a whole security system on that giant door. Like, I would have never thought of doing that. Like making the pipes into into keypads, using the um, the pressure valves as as locks and stuff and all that. And besides, the amount of resources and the knowledge to even like, move an entire brick wall without making the whole ceiling collapse is, is just quite a feat of engineering. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have too much to really say about, um, the, about that scene there. The one thing we should all got to say is when Casey kicked that can and he made that really goofy face. I mean, uh, that's the thing I just wanted to point out. It's just, yikes, that face. Um, <laughs> hopefully... You saw it and <laughs> knew what I mean. I think I saw it, but I think my brain refused to acknowledge it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, then going into the uh, next scene, we did get to see the total, so back in the lair, and, was, and they all come up with the same idea that they basically want to go back to Shredder's HQ and, like, uh, defeat him and stuff like that. And they still, and talk about, like, different plans, how to, how to defeat him, and uh, Donnie gets all the blueprints of Shredder's building. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, I don't really have too much to say, but for that particular scene where they all want to return to Shredder's Lair and a full-on surprise attack, but I gotta say, when Mikey went to the kitchen and started um, saying, oh, my babies, like he was referring to the crisps, that was just, that was a bit weird. I found that a bit weird to me. Like, he was so fixated on his crisps or chips, as they say in America. He was just, like, cutting in, cutting in them like a little baby. And, of course, then he then proceeded to drink three-month-old milk. And when Casey said that, I, I couldn't help but, like, gag a bit. Like, I couldn't help but not gag at the... At the even though it's not real, you still feel yeah. like <laughs> you need to gag. Because three-month milk... Even now, just thinking about it, it just makes me a bit sick. Like the chunks, the curdles, it's it, it's not good, especially milk when it curdles. And it's 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 just not nice. And to any of the you know, those who have who know what I'm talking about, when milk goes bad and it goes off, it it's not pretty. Yeah, I mean, with this whole scene here, I mean, I, I must admit it did feel a little bit weird going like to have a scene in the lair again because. We haven't been in there since episode, uh, was it 13? So, it's, it's, I must admit, it does feel quite weird to be back in the lair again, but it was still, like, quite nice to see the lair again. And, I don't know, it's all, like, a weird thing to be there again. And then, uh, with the turtles, like, I mean, just like Leo and Raph, they decided to just go into the middle of the lair and just uh, do weird training. I mean, it was okay, I, I don't really, like, promise against it, but just, it was, like, so weird, I just come in and just, just start moving the hands around all the blades, and just like, uh, really? <laughs> Um, and yeah, and then one thing which I really did like about, uh, this whole scene when they were talking about going back to Shredder's place and using the sort of Tengu and stuff like that, which I thought was really great, um, 
it was the fact that Lee was like doubting himself and stuff like that, and like thinking back to those past episodes, which I thought was like really great for like developing his character and still like developing like storylines which they could potentially like explore later down in the series. I thought that was like really great for those like setting up that bit there. Um, so yeah. So, um, so yeah, they're going into the next scene when the Turtles all decide to go there. They do have a, uh, their first fight, but not actually fighting. They get their car who goes into the building and blows things up before Hun eventually blows it, it up as well. Uh, what do you think about that fight scene? Just before we go into that fight scene, um, Teddy, I just want to say about with the Sword of Tengu and, of course, Leo Doubt himself, I really did like that as well because it shows character development. But i got to say, when Ralph tried picking up the sword, after he picked up the glove to, well, I was hoping he was going to put it on his hand, then he grabbed it with his bare hand, the sword of Tengu, and he just shot himself all the way across the floor. That I don't know why, but that scene just kind of cracked me up a bit. It was just funny that how he picked up the glove intentionally to put it on his hand and then of course he then goes and grabs it with his bare hand and then gets shocked across the room that i, that I just found funny yeah um so yeah, what do you think about the uh call uh, fight scene i gotta say i was pretty pretty impressed of how it all was choreographed together but the problem was it was it was kind of weird because I don't know if you saw this, Teddy, but the van looked 3D in some of the scenes. Like it looked like a 3D model or a mesh or something. And then compared to the 2D hand drawn backgrounds and all that, it just kind of it was subtle, but there's nothing really wrong to say about it. But I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't seeing things. Yeah. In that scene. Yeah. I definitely didn't notice it like driving. Uh, into the building. I didn't notice it when it was actually like f- uh, fighting the foot soldiers. But I say that it wasn't bad. But, like it was like a like you can like visually see that like, it was a bit different at times. But I must admit, it, this was the, like the first time which I was like seen that, and I've seen this episode like multiple times, like over, like nearly twenty years, I think. And the first time I've seen it, so yeah, I I did. Like, I don't know. It, it works for the most part, and. It, it it does uh, stick out like a sore thumb, uh, like like a sore thumb sometimes, but it's not bad. It just looks a bit off. I think it's like the best way to describe it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. But overall, that scene was pretty interesting, and I've got to say the t- the battle shell. There are so much weapons in there. Like I'm surprised the van didn't explode going through New York City to get to Shredder's Lair because the amount of mortars rockets like jet fuel it was insane like it was like its own one-man army that thing and it comes in there it blows everything up destroys hundreds of pieces of equipment and of course i'm surprised no one got even killed (laughs) in that scene probably (laughs) someone got injured from the amount of explosions like i've never seen one one turtle episode with so many explosions in it before like it was just Unreal to think in that small scene, I must have counted at least what 10 or 15 explosions, maybe even more. It was just there was so much happening on the screen. You're, you're trying to process, like, hold on a minute, that explosion's going off, something's going on there. Han's got an explosive that he's now thrown, and everything's crazy. The foot are going mad, they have no idea what's going on, and it was just crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think that overall with this fight scene, um. I think like the best way I'd probably to say it was like it's a very unique uh, fight scene. Just because it wasn't in you know, like to her, like the traditional sense of having a person fight another person, and I do think that is like a very unique fight, and I do think it's like quite good for being different. And you know, the car is up to its name of being in the battle uh, car and all that, or but yeah, battle shell. It, 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 I don't know. Um, like I would say that it's not like like a very entertaining fight, but it was it was a unique fight because you don't really get to see. A van just got up against like, loads of people and blow things up. It was unique, I'd say that. Um, yeah, and then tongue just comes up and just blows it up. <laughs> a little bit anticlimactic, but it all did suit the situation. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so going into uh, the next scene, it was like, or like, or yeah, probably like next scene. It was the turtles versus all the Foot Clan in the in that, in that computer room. 
What do you think about that scene? Um, I kind of liked that scene. I just liked how the um the animators and the producers managed to get the um. It looked, it looked like it had multiple layers. Like there was a second floor and a bottom floor, and of course you had all the maps around it. I just liked how they created the depth in that scene. Like it was a huge room with hundreds of ninjas in it, and it just looked really cool in my in my stance. Like just the amount of depth and detail they managed to get into one one of the rooms, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I have to say that with this um, fight scene, I really did enjoy it. I thought that it was like a, just a really great, fun little fight, uh, f- a fun little fight scene, which just works so well just for being a Turtles vs. Uh, Foot Clan fight scene. And I would say that one of the best things which I really did enjoy about it was the fact that it was able to give each of the characters a, I'll say like a little bit of like a spotlight really, in terms of having their little moment to shine, such as like Spencer going on the, on, on the chairs, hitting all the foot soldiers, or Mikey doing his thing while falling down on that good console bit, and then, you know, that little bit there. I, I know, I, I think that it really gave all the characters, like, their moment to shine, and I do think that worked really well in their favour. And the only thing which I would, I had to say, that sort of, like, negative about it, um, going back to my point about giving all the characters a spotlight, was the fact that I didn't really give Johnny much of a spotlight, I'd say, but he did have something to do in the scene, but I wish that he would have, like, more of a fighting role. But other than that, I just thought, it was just like a really great fight scene. So then going into the next scene, which I got from you probably liked a lot, it was the Turtles versus the Invisible Foot Ninja fight. What do you think about that fight scene? The Invisible... Hold on a minute, I feel like we're skipping some parts. Well, I don't think we are. It... Well, I don't think we are. It's just for the fact that there's not really too much really to talk about. It's just some fight scenes. and <laughs> uh, I guess that's... And stuff with Splinter and Hun. Uh, no, uh, no, God, uh, oh God, it was Shred and Hun. Like when they're talking about where, um, about what to do next. There was some stuff there, but like, there's not really too much of it. Yeah, there was some stuff there. Do you anything to say about that bit? Because I didn't really too much to say. Now that you say it, there's not really much there to talk about as such because we don't know what Bax is doing still. Like we don't know what he's developing in that room of his. So. Yeah, I guess you're kind of right. Yeah, it's just a bit weird because like I know that we like we want to talk about stuff, but at the same time, it's just fighting, and how much can you really talk about it? It's just it, it's pretty person in a really a hard situation, I'd say. Um, so yeah, the invisible ninja fight scene. Uh, what do you think about that scene? The invisible ninja fight scene. Um, that was a very interesting scene because we see the turtles. The turtles have finally emerged, and they're in this giant room with all these equipment, with these military equipment. We've got tanks, we've got hovercrafts, and going back to the quote that you said last week, Teddy, about the um, the toys. What was it? I can't remember for the <laughs> life of me. Um, the difference between men and boys is size of the toys. That was the quote that Raph used at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> Yes, that's it. I understood that quote. I was like, oh, that's where it came from. And I was thinking, that quote doesn't make any sense. But now that they're in the the room with all these toys, like, even Donnie said it was like he he died and gone to tech heaven or something along those lines. (laughs) Yeah, it was... (laughs) I, I don't know, I, I feel as though that with this, with like the, like the location, or the, like the room that I was in, with all the different, uh, like, like machines and technology they have, but they didn't really, I feel as though they didn't really use that to their full advantage. I feel as though they could have used a lot more of that stuff, because they only used that flying hover, uh, craft thing, um, some fire extinguishers, a car, and that smoke, uh, gun thing that didn't work. So I, I feel as though they could have used a lot more in that room to make it a bit more, Lifelike or lively, I'd say. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Could have. They could have done. Oh, and I just quickly want to say before we get into any more of this episode, I just want to say, why in, why, just why would Mikey point the end of a barrel of an unfamiliar gun? Oh, excuse me. Towards his face, like. When I saw that, I was like, oh my god, he's going to shoot himself in the face with a gun. And 
I'm thinking, look, if that was a laser, his face would just get either disintegrated or blown off. And I'm surprised he didn't kill himself just by looking at the gun <laughs> through the barrel. That That's just the one little thing. Like, if it was an like, actual gun or a laser or whatever Shredder's toy was, it could have killed him. It could have just wiped him out. Like, <laughs> And that's that's the one little thing that I got to gotta say because that really triggered me really annoyed me to the point like he could have actually died but luckily enough it was a smoke gun it was yeah. a smoke gun and do you know what that smoke gun reminded me of teddy um not really how uh, do you remember the old minions movie do you mean despicable me yeah despicable yeah. me and with docs with the fart gun Oh yeah. Oh god. That that just reminded me of that. I don't know why, but it just kind of brought me back to thinking, oh my god, that's Dr. Atavia's um fart gun right there. That was just so funny to me. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> oh my god. Um but yeah, uh... Uh, what do you think about the, um, the actual f- uh, fight scene between the Tolls and the Dingers? <laughs> um, I really did enjoy the fight scene. The fight scene was interesting because we got to see all the Tolls back at it again, especially Leo after his incident in New York, like you said, a couple of episodes back. But it was really cool to see. And, of course, I got a shout-out to Master Splinter because we haven't seen much of Master Splinter fight that much, and it was really nice to see him go on a mission with the turtles to strike back at the shredder as a sort of vengeance um but i gotta say i gotta with the master splinter and of course his fighting scenes he he was able to take down four foot ninjas with a single blow that was just insane like without breaking a sweat and of course also when he broke um some of the foot foot tech ninjas story and he was fighting he put up a good fight and i gotta say his skills outmatch any of the turtles thus far like he's still got a lot to teach them you have to say that with the start of the fight scene i thought it was uh, really good but at the same time, i mean i did really enjoy it because you know it's more fighting than ninjas and stuff like that but i would say that it did feel a tad bit weird with how the ninjas were strong in this episode. And, um, now, the thing is, I know that these ninjas are quite powerful because, like, episode 8, they were able to take out Raph, Casey, and they only lost because Tolls had the night vision thing. But then, in episode, was it, uh, 17, when Leo went, uh, blindfolded himself to take out the invisible ninjas in the rain, it sort of makes you question a lot of stuff like that. Like, they probably could have defeated them. But they went down this uh, route to make it seem as though, oh, it's another challenge for, for Turtles and stuff like that. Which I do guess is like a good thing for the episode and the story to like, do another challenge. But at the same time, they definitely could have defeated them. And I do think that like, how Mustwinter is presented in the show, I do definitely think that he definitely could have defeated them. I just think it was more just, oh, Turtles need another challenge and stuff like that. So I think that's the only problem which I've got to say about it. It's just... That they could have defeated them, I just think that they wrote them in a way so that they're not. But then, uh, the next thing we do have Raph getting on the hoverboard or the, the the flying machine thing. What do you think about that scene? Well, that was pretty surprising. Like, I was quite shocked that Raph could easily drive that thing, even though he has no experience or, like, prior knowledge of how to use that thing i guess like literally you push a button and then boom he's up in the air then of course he managed to activate the weapon system on that hovercraft and he was i'm surprised he didn't kill anyone like i'm saying this now because he doesn't he didn't know what he was doing he just pressed a couple of buttons he was flying up in the air and shooting everything that moved and i'm surprised he didn't kill one of his own brothers like that's another thing that triggers me like the amount of carnage that could have killed someone and of course luckily enough he didn't but it could have happened (laughs) yeah i'd see that with those scenes with the whole whole craft thing it was like really i I don't know it felt weird to see the turtles using those kind of technology i mean especially raf i think it was like donatello then i think it would make a bit more sense but i just think it was just 
it was just Raph that just didn't really click all too well with me. But at the same time, the way that his attitude was, it worked. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. I think it would have seen it's just going to be one of those things where, oh, it was great because of this, but I didn't like it because of this. So uh, I, I was, I'm was in the middle of it because there's like, good things and bad things about it. But then we do get to a, re- a really interesting scene. We do get to see Moss Winter fighting an invisible ninja uh, on, a, on, on a truck. Which was, oh my god, that was amazing. What do you think about that scene? Um, to be honest, I was pretty impressed with Master Splinter's skills to get on the truck and deactivate it. But, to be honest, it was just so much information to try and take in. It was just too much for my brain to handle. Like, you got Master Splinter, you got the tank. Actually, was it a truck or was it a tank? I thought it was a tank. I think it was supposed to be like a hybrid, I think. I'm not, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna call it a tank because it looked like a tank. Um, just seen, just seen them. Of course, Master Splinter jumped into action. Of course, Leo was trapped under all the, all the, all the um, debris from the explosion and all of that, and he was trapped. And of course, Master Splinter jumped into action, um, deactivated the tank, and saved the turtles. Of course, which was pretty, pretty impressive. But I don't really have too much to say for that. Yeah, to say that with the uh, that fight scene, I really did enjoy it with, because I, know, I think maybe the music helped it as well, like making it a bit more intense. But I do think that maybe the main reason why I didn't enjoy it because of how intense it was was the fact that it was Moss Winter who was struggling to fight. And, you know, like Moss Winter is like a very strong character, he's so more skilled and stuff like that. So to see him like sort of like, fail and struggle with it seemed interestingly weird, but it just worked so well. Uh, so then for the final, uh, part about this fight, we do get to see, um, some smoke come down and the turtles defeat the Invisible Ninjas. What do you think about that scene? Um, of course, there wasn't really too much to say for it in my part. Like, they managed to get the Tech Ninjas good on them, but like you said before, this isn't new to them. Like, they could have used, like, the water trick that they used, um, a couple of episodes back to detect them and to beat them of course but and of course then they just use the new weapons that donnie created but it was a bit unplanned if you get what i mean like they could have used so much more to detect and to defeat them in a much more fi- efficient way like it was just a bit weird for me yeah I mean, one thing which i found a bit weird was the fact that when the smoke was coming down they was able to see the ninjas I don't think that, I, I, I don't understand how that works, because that wouldn't really affect anything of how they would see the ninjas. And, I mean, unless it was like, sm- like actual, like, sit from, like, uh, from, like, maybe, like, what, like one machine sink or something like that. But I just don't understand how the smoke or, like, made them, like, findable, if <laughs> that makes sense. That is a bit, seems like, very weird to me. Hopefully that makes sense, or... <laughs> Hopefully I'm not being stupid. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, so then for the final scene, we do get to see the tools go up into a genetic lab, and that's when they encounter some Shredder clones, and that's where we leave the episode. So, what do you think about that scene? This was really interesting. Like, this was... Supr- I was not expecting this at all. Like, they've got the clones of shredder which i originally thought was the people in the underground layer or the lab that the turtles found the last couple of episodes back and helped turn back and i thought the shredder had recaptured them and turned them back into their mutants and was going to be let loose to attack the turtles once again but it wasn't thank god um but yeah i really wasn't expecting like the mutants or what variants of Shredder to come out and attack. Like the one with the forearms was was really good. Like there was a lot of detail, a lot of time and effort went into the design of the characters, especially the forearms guy. And then of course I see a little Diddy version of Shredder, and that was just really funny to see. Like he <laughs> he's a little goblin version of Shredder, and he's got like a massive arm, and he's got a smaller arm, and he's just super small and tiny with his little Diddy armor on. Like he's just little Diddy Shredder. It's like mini, it's like um mini me, like mini Shredder. That's what it is. He's actually called Shrimp Shredder. 
No way. Shrimp yeah. Shredder? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shrimp Shredder. Okay, that works. I was going to call him Mini Shredder, but Shrimp shrimp does him well. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I mean, I was saying this seemed to be quite cool, like, setting up that, like, storyline for, like, the next episode. But I must admit, I've always found it really weird why the Shredder had clones. Because in the original comics, it made sense. Because in the first issue, Shredder died. So, basically, they need to bring back Shredder. And, he, uh, like, the clones were more or less, like, test subjects of, uh, um, of like, the early examples of Shredder. But in this uh, version of Turtles... I just don't understand why he has Shredder clones. It just seems extremely weird why he has them all of a sudden. And they, I mean, I mean, just I mean, just like they don't ever like they don't really do much with the Shredder clones anyway. So it just feels so weird and just so out of place for this version tells to include them. That's all I really got to say about it. But yeah, <laughs> God, we we really have gone through this episode quite quickly. Um, but what do you think? What about uh, yeah? Uh, what do you think about this episode overall? Overall, this episode I thought was a really good one. It was really good. It got us back into the groove of things, and it got us back into New York, and of course, it got back to the original set storyline of the turtles hanging out in the lair, and of course, going out defeating the bad guys. And it was just a nice introduction to how things are going to play out for the rest of the series, which is really nice. And of course, we still got parts two and hopefully, is there a three, may I ask? Is there part three to this or is there just two parts? There is three parts to this. There is three parts, right. Got yeah. So we got three, we got another two parts to enjoy and to dissect that. So yeah, but overall, I think this is a nice, chill introductory episode to the whole the whole of it as well and may i ask is this like a mid-season finale or is this like a season finale of the turtles in this in this series alone or do we still have tons more to come um so after this story arc there'll be three more episodes and then we're done with this uh uh, season and the thing is is that with the story arc everyone says that this is basically like the like the season like this like the season finale and it more or less is but technically it's not so that's like the best way of describing the whole the whole situation. <laughs> right, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's really weird, but like, it does feel like the season finale when you do look at, at things with how everything's been set up and stuff like that. But the season finale we should do tell... It, it, it works as a season finale, but when you do look at uh, like uh, what happens in part three of the story, you're like, well, yeah, that definitely should have been the season finale. And it does feel like the season finale, but it's not. <laughs> But yeah, but, yeah. I mean, overall, I thought that this episode was like really great, just getting us back into crew things, like you already said. And do you think that the action they had in this one, with the um, with the Invisible Ninjas, the one in the tech room, I thought that was just really great. I, I mean, with those fight scenes, like no one really talks about how great they are, or like, like say they're in top ten or anything like that. But like, they're just like really great, fun fight scenes, which I just want more of those to happen. But, yeah. Um, okay, so we don't hear some comments now. Let's hear them. So there's actually, we've only got two comments, so it's a bit surprising. So, <laughs> yeah. And one of them's not even a great one. We've got Omar uh, Mid- Midgetair, they put, I remember it. That's all they put. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, for Kids Timothy, they put arguably the best story arc in Timothy history, along with the original Mirage comics. So, with that, uh, I'd like to ask one quick question. So, because you've seen uh, the uh, Shredder Strikes Back uh, story arc and you quite enjoyed that, would you, uh, and you've only seen part one of this one so far, but which one are you look? Uh, which one are you enjoying more so far, I'd say? Well, I'm quite interested to hear about that. I think it's a bit too early to say in in this series like I'm I'm still learning and of course I'm still watching them and it's quite a lot to take in so at the moment I'm going to keep my um opinion about the whole situation open and just keep it open to see what happens and to see where it goes within this series okay um, okay, so for trivia, um, there's not much, and it's very bad trivia actually. Uh, the battleship was destroyed during this episode. 
Doctor, uh, this marks the second appearance of the Fritch in Essex Lab, the first one which was seen in the Notes from the Underground Part 1, abandoned, destroyed by the mutant creatures there. Uh, and when Donnie presses the code to unlock the lair, the beeping sound uh, was, uh, was, uh, was similar to parts of the theme song at the beginning. Um, like, did you pick up on that? Where it goes... Doo, 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 doo. Yes! <laughs> oh, that's what I forgot to say. Oh, yeah, I um, I was going to say, that sounds like the um, intro thing to, you know, the Turtles. And it was like a nice little Easter egg in there, I think it was. Yeah. I mean... I, I, I don't know, it's always just been one of those really fun, catchy things, and it's, we should all use that bit a bit more, it just, this works so well, I, I think it's somewhat, somewhat catchy, <laughs> um, but yeah, so for the cast, it, it's again, I feel like it's going to be another week, right, we don't really look into anyone uh, too much, just because we've seen all these people before, or, uh, yeah, so we've got Veronica Taylor doing April O'Neil, uh, Mark Thompson doing Casey Jones, Sam Regal doing Dontello, Gregari doing Hun, Michael Syndicalus doing Leonardo, Wayne Grayson doing Michelangelo, Frank Frankson doing Raphael, Scotty Ray doing The Shredder, Darren Johnson doing Splinter, and Scott uh, Williams doing Bass Duckman. So, yeah, I mean, we looked into everyone, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> shall we move on to the next part? Yeah, I guess if there's no one else to um to review, I guess like I can't believe we went through all of them that quick. Yeah. Um. Okay. So for the next part, it is Return to New York Part Two. So what do you think is going to happen in that episode? Um. Well, I think the turtles are going to finally reach their destination within the Shredder's Tower, and I think there's going to be a lot more action to come especially with them trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and especially with the genetic um, genetic versions of, sorry, the clones or variants, as you want, as some people may suggest, of Shredder. And I really want to see what happens next, because the Shredder, like the little, the little Diddy guy or Shrimp Shredder and Forearm Shredder and the other Shredder, like... It is interesting to figure out, like, Shredder is still using cloning technology to better himself in battle, and it it's just a really interesting subject to go down. But, yeah, just have to wait till next episode, I guess. Yeah, you're, you're more or less on the right tracks, I would say, in terms of, 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 in ter- in terms of like, what's going to happen in the episode. But then again, I feel as though that because you already know what's happening in this episode, you pretty much have a good idea of what's going to happen in the next one, so... <laughs> a tad bit cheating, I'd say. Um, but here's the next question, and I know they're going to hate it. But who do you think is going to be starting the episode off? And I'll give you a hint: it's one of the turtles. I think it's going to be Donny. I'll give you I'll, okay. Um, I'll, I'll give you another chance um, to guess who it is. I don't want to do this because I know I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> is it Leo? I'll give you another chance. Oh, it's Mikey, I guess. Just Mikey then. Is Raph again? Oh, what the! F- <laughs> you kidding me? This is you can't have two episodes with Raph. This is just nah, <laughs> nah. I don't. This is nah. This ain't right. This ain't right. It's nah, true. This ain't, this ain't right. No. Well, um, well, I mean, it's happened before with the show strikes uh, part one, part two, where Leonardo was doing um both introductions. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is just, this is going to be like a running thing now, I guess. Like, oh well, there's always next episode, I guess. <laughs> and you get it wrong there, uh, um, oh god. And, mm, mm, come on. And, mm, damn it. And, mm, you know, you know what, forget. <sighs> <laughs> uh, but uh yeah so do you have anything else to say about this episode or is it all done with this one um i think i've said what i needed to say in this one um unless we unless you got anything to say teddy no i don't really think else to say but like it's been like we, we've gone through this like really quickly and I'm, like i mean i, I don't mean like a bad way but like, there's nothing too much to really talk about in this episode and yeah <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit of a weird one. We haven't had a short episode like this in a very long time. No, I mean, I can't remember the last time we've had to... 
Uh, because like, I know, like, because I, I was thinking like, Shreya Strikes Back Part Two is going to be a short one because there's many action, but I mean that one was quite a while. But this one, extremely short. I think this won't be the shortest one we've done so far. So I think that's a good thing. I think. Yeah, I guess we still got another two parts to go through, so there's a lot more to get through. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Um, if you want to go into the podcast, you can leave a comment in. Uh, you can leave a comment on the community tab on YouTube. You can leave a comment on Facebook, a Reddit pay, on the Reddit pay or re- Reddit pose. You can leave a text message on Anchor or voice message on Anchor. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been your host Teddy, and I've been Hayden, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye, yo, bye, bye.